Hey everybody, it's Jasmine and I am back with my monthly hits and misses video. Today is a very special day because I'm going to be working on set in a photo shoot in about a couple of hours and I decided to get ready because I'm also going to be modeling some of my press on nails. So currently I have some naked nails right now and I have a lot of my press on nails in my bag ready to go. So I'm really excited to show you guys some photos once they come out in a couple of weeks. But I just wanted to say I'm so excited and I'm so blessed to be granted this opportunity and it honestly wouldn't have been possible if you guys weren't so supportive of my small business so thank you all so much and if you guys want to get some of your handmade press on nails or accessories please shop on shopbeautybyjasmineyun.com all right so let's go ahead and start with the hit products of february since 2018, I have been an avid user of aluminum-free deodorants, and I recently tried out the Ali Oop aluminum-free paraben-free deodorant. Now, this one in particular is the pomegranate scent. Now, Ali Oop actually sent me a different scent. It was a sage scent, and for some reason, the texture and formula was really hard, really dry, and it kind of just scratched the surface of my skin, which irritated my armpits. So I found um, the pomegranate one at Urban Outfitters on sale for five dollars and I thought you know what let's buy it let's try it out see if the pomegranate one is better and it is it's so smooth it's so long lasting I am a sweater but it doesn't inhibit my sweat and it doesn't um, I don't know it just doesn't do anything crazy to my armpits it kind of just makes me feel natural while smelling good and kind of just sweating a normal amount just not excessively so I really do like it and it just feels nice smells nice pretty good I believe it is also cruelty free yes it's vegan cruelty free aluminum free sulfate free paraben free and the more you use it the more it starts to naturally stop your hair growth Continuing on with some of the skincare because your armpits are part of your skin, let's also talk about your scalp. I feel like a lot of the times we tend to forget and neglect our scalp care. Now, as you guys know, I do suffer from a dry, itchy, flaky, dandruff prone scalp, and I have been still utilizing the same techniques as my last uh, dandruff video, um, but I recently got this from Derma E. It's called their Scalp Relief Treatment. It's like a liquid product like this, and it has has tea tree oil which is my saving grace when it comes to hair care um, it also has aloe vera it also has an herbal blend and it soothes dry and itchy scalp so what you want to do is after you shower you just put this in your hair as much as you want as little as you want and then you just style it blow dry as usual now for me personally whenever I want to prevent any dandruff or itchiness I always blow dry my hair because I don't want it to air dry and I don't want to sleep with my wet hair because it can cause a uh, fungus and I just want to avoid that as much as possible so I just really like this because it just instantly soothes you could genuinely feel it like the moment you put it on it feels like you have a tingly fresh clean slate it feels really nice and Derma E is a drugstore brand so you're looking at like what under $20 I recently got a comment in my last Shop Miss A Roundup review asking, do you even use SPF? And I didn't show the SPF portion in that video because I wanted to just strictly show Shop Miss A's skincare. But yes, I do use SPF and the SPF that I've been using for the past two months has been this by Dermalogica. It's called their Dynamic Skin Recovery. It's SPF 50 and it's a UVA high protection and it also is age smart. So this just has a lot of extra skincare in ingredients in this sunscreen to just help prevent aging and when you're in the sun that's like the number one thing that causes aging so this just has additional ingredients to just help your skin out even more. I'm gonna read you guys the back of this bottle because I feel like I'm not doing this product any justice. It says, help minimize skin aging triggers with this medium weight emollient daily moisturizer with broad spectrum SPF 50. My allergies? are not it right now um but yeah this is a super lightweight uh sunscreen and i really do love the fact that once you apply it it literally sinks into the skin so this is just one small pump no white cast it blends in effortlessly like a dream and it doesn't feel like you have anything on the skin it just feels like a normal moisturizer 
Let's talk about the last skincare product. This is by Shop Massey. This is their Lip Blast. I have the flavor watermelon, and honestly, this is so, so bomb. One of my favorite lip balms like that are in this type of container. I just feel like it's so hydrating. It's not like the most emollient. It's not the most... Um, workable on the lips i feel like it is still kind of thick um but thick in a good way it's thick kind of like the jelly jam but in a stick form it really adheres to the lips really well and it lasts on the lips for a very long time i love this over a lot of their other moisturizing lip products my top two like i mentioned in my shop masse review is the lip blast and the jelly jam I have a couple of things from Kaja, and the first one that I want to mention is the Kaja Gloss Shot. This is amazing. I love the shade Pink Drink in particular. They have four shades total. Pink Drink is my number one favorite because it is just so sheer, so lightweight, but so hydrating on the lips. This is probably my favorite gloss formula, dare I say, in my entire collection. It feels so, so good on the lips, um, and I just feel like, for me, I'm so picky with my gloss is because I don't like gloss as a matter of fact I actually hate gloss I love a matte lip like I have on today and it just feels like glosses to me are a little too heavy they're a little too sticky even if some of them claim to not be sticky but this one feels like a lip oil it feels like your lips are hydrated and that's all that I could really really ask for in a lip product so for that reason I really do love this and I recommend it we have the iconic Kaja Bentos. I love these two in particular. This one is spiked ginger, and then this one is a lot of colada. So, so pretty. I've been using this almost every single day this month. So a lot of colada has this yellow nude. It's, it's nude on me because I'm so yellow. It has a shimmery gold. And then finally it has a warm brown. Very pretty all together. And then for spiked ginger, the top shade here is just a light tan. The middle is more of like a rosy shimmer. And then the bottom is another dark warm tan. Although you only get three shades in the bentos, it actually works together really nice. It just pairs together like a dream and it is so easy, especially when you're in a rush, especially when you're just trying to get out the house, go to work, um, and especially now that you're wearing masks, sometimes you don't feel like doing your makeup a whole lot. So just keeping it at a minimum with three eyeshadows is so simple, so easy. I love the fact that on the top here, you do get a small mirror, which is nice because there have been times where I was just like oh I really need to like rush I can't you know just use my hand mirror I can't just use any other mirrors I need something super close to my eye so it's been really nice and convenient for me to use these in my everyday routine I really really do like them and I hope that I could get my hands on more Kaja bentos because I would love to do a one week palette series with them dare I say I never thought I would be a cream blush person I just found like cream blushes to just not be my thing. I could get away with like cream bronzers, cream highlighters, but cream blushes just never really attracted to me and my routine. But I recently got this one from Oh Hi. My best friend Kate, she won a giveaway and it was like, here's a gift for you and then here's another gift for your friend. So we both got um, some of the Ojai cream blushes. The one that I personally love is Sahara, which is supposed to be the nude, like brownish shade, but it actually comes out pretty red. I'm gonna just swatch it for you guys. This is what it looks like on the skin. Once it's blended out, it looks really amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap it out for you. It's so easy and it builds up really beautifully. So on days where I use this are days where I'm not wearing any foundation. Oh, you can barely see it, but um, it still like gives you like a very natural glow when you like have it on your actual face. But when you are using this, I feel like it's best for me when I'm wearing like, um, like a light coverage foundation or no foundation at all and just concealer. Now my last hit is actually something that I just used, which is my Japanese Kumadori sponge. This used to be my holy grail in like what, 2018, 2017. And I rediscovered this because I had some backups. They used to sell these at Ulta, they took it out of Ulta, and now they sell them at Walmart. Now this was my backup sponge and I just didn't wanna use it because I just felt like, oh, it's my baby. Like I, I just love it, I wanna treasure it. Um, but I, I busted it back out for the new year and it has been amazing. I used it to apply my foundation 
foundation today and every single time I use this I'm like damn my foundation looks so so good it's just the right amount of density is the right amount of softness it's a little bit more dense than the shop mistake paw paw sponge but it's not as dense as like uh, I feel like uh is it on par with the mochi? I feel like it might be on par with the mochi blender to be quite honest with you and not like the paw paw. So if you are interested in that mochi texture but love something, just a little bit more luxe, just like a little bit more high quality then you might really like the Japanese Kumidori sponge. I have three misses for you guys in this video. Now, I want to mention two of the same products, but they're just different colors. Um, this one is by Odin's Eye. This is their Norns highlighter. It's their individual highlighters. And I have this one that's called Web of Destiny, and then this one is called Veil of Future. Now, they look so pretty. Like, they have, like, this beautiful marbled texture. I know I still have the plastic slip on top, but as you see, it's so stunning. Thing. but the thing about these is that they have just such a harsh overspray and then once you get down to like the actual highlighter it's not that amazing and they have really bomb highlighter palettes that have a really nice buttery formula really easy to blend while these ones I feel like I really have to dig inside and really search for that pigment so it's not necessarily my favorite it's still good but I just would say like compared to like all my other highlighters I would say these ones are quick to declutter for me but let's be clear, I'm not going to declutter them because I have another Odin's Eye Palette series coming up and I want to keep it for the sake of that video. Um, and now for the last two products, they're both by Kin. And this is a hair care brand. I got these at Ulta. And the first one that I want to talk about is their Dry Shampoo Mist. Now, I initially got these from my client kit because I needed another dry shampoo and I also needed another texture spray. So um, when I got this, I was like, oh, these smell so good. Um, I feel like these are really good. And then when I looked at the reviews, the reviews for Kin itself was like really amazing. So I thought, okay, like let's do it, like let's buy it. And I got it on sale. So I was like, okay, what can go wrong, right? This dry shampoo spray does nothing. It doesn't like soak up the oils. In fact, it just wets the hair. It wets the hair, it kind of weighs it down, and even though it smells good, I feel like it just doesn't do what a dry shampoo is supposed to do. And especially if you're like me and you're a freelancer, you know that time is precious, especially when you're working with brides or you're working uh, for a photo shoot. It's really important to just have your products work fast and efficiently and I feel like with this one I had to wait for it to dry it took like 10 minutes to dry and it wasn't worth it and alongside that the texture spray here this was another thing that ruined the hairstyle and every single time I was like oh like let me just like um, spray a little bit this time let me like try and just scrunch it in the hair and every single time I had curled my clients hair and I spray the texture spray in it the curls fell because it was kind of like water. Like it it just fell completely. It didn't hold anything. It didn't like um, scrunch it up even better. It loosened the curl so then I would have to go do the whole head again and it was just like so not worth it. And there you have it, you guys. We are completed with my February hits and misses. I hope you guys all really enjoy this one. I am so excited to get ready to go to my photo shoot. I'm so excited. So for this photo shoot, I am going to be working on a model and she's going to be modeling my nails, but we're also doing like a themed shoot. So this theme is like kind of like a vampire. So we're starting out with something um, very natural, very innocent, and then we're gonna progress our way to something a little bit more gorgeous and scary um, maybe a little bit more sultry uh, not too scary like SFX or anything like that and then um, after that's done it's going to be my turn for the modeling so I'm so excited I cannot wait and like I said in the beginning of this video I'm so thankful for every single one of you guys for supporting my small business and for supporting this journey I am so so happy like I feel like I don't express it enough and I feel like as somebody who comes from a fairly traditional Cambodian family you know our culture we don't really believe in like 
pursuing beauty or pursuing um, makeup, nails, anything like that. I feel like um, for a lot of my family members, they think, oh, it's just something that you do as a last resort to just get that extra money. But for me, I'm pursuing business and I'm pursuing makeup and my press on nails. So it's really amazing to break that stigma in my family and to make it known that like this is something that like I actually want to do and not just a last minute resort. And there have been some times where I've fell into a rut where, you know, I had people tell me to my face, especially family members where, you know, it's like, do you really want to do this? Why don't you just continue to pursue business when this is my business, this is what I want to do, and I'm doing it for myself. So I'm hoping that I can inspire some of you guys to continue pursuing your dreams despite any stigmas, despite any um, back talk. And you know, I just feel like sometimes it is hard to create your own path and to continue that journey for yourself, especially when you know you feel like sometimes you don't get the support that you want. It's just really important to just keep grinding, keep doing what you love because everything will fall into place when it needs to. So um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scouts.